Hey, welcome back, guys. How are you doing? Hopefully well. This is part two of our walkthrough of Ocarina of Time, the original Nintendo 64 classic that I'm playing on the Nintendo Switch using this really cool wireless controller that I've shown you before. This is part two of our Ocarina of Time. Last time we started things off, went around the village in the forest, and then beat the Deku tree in the big arachnid inside. Now we're in Hyrule Field. We're going to make our way over to the castle. We're going to go see a princess, and that's going to be pretty cool. So please join me as we play Ocarina of Time, the classic, the amazing 3D Zelda game that really started the whole 3D revolution of Zelda. That being said, thanks for joining me, guys. This is Loud Boy. See you soon. So here we go, we're in Hyrule Field. It is currently nighttime, still. And we're gonna make our way over. Basically, if you check out the map in the uh, bottom right corner of the screen there, uh, you can see where I am and I started off at the entrance to the forest. And uh, basically you can just walk around those guys. If you've never played before, uh, there's a whole day and nighttime system here. Wherein, uh, so say if we look up in the sky, yeah, there, there's the moon. You can actually see it tracking across the sky. And, uh, and as it's about to set, dawn will come. And the great thing about dawn is, even when those skeletons are out, uh, trying to bother you, basically they disappear at the crack of the sunrise. Is that even a saying, crack of the sunrise? Anyway, I digress. And that was the rooster crowing. And there's the sun coming up over Death Mountain, which we'll be headed soon. So meanwhile, let's head into... Heading our way towards... Now, by, by the way, if you need, um... If you need rupees, this is a great place to find them early on. You can smash all these pots and collect quite a few in here. And you can roll into these crates and normally there is a, a rupee in one of these. And actually, since, since we're starting off a new game here, there is a gold skull in there. So again, right by the gate, there is a uh, this little gatehouse. And it's funny, when you talk to the soldier that's guarding it, he actually encourages you to, uh, to break the crates. Yeah, anyway, good job. <laughs> Instead of rolling into it, I climbed up onto it. Alright, so. And actually, they got me up to about 49. One more to go. Uh, let's, let's see, any up here? I'm gonna round this sucker out to 50. And there we go. All right, still at 49. That's okay. All right, so leaving the gatehouse with a classic overview. And basically, there's lots of shops in here. There's a potion shop. There's a place where you can play games over there. If I went up these stairs, it goes to the Temple of Time, something that I'll play a key role in later. This girl... She, uh, she's actually, uh, I believe this is Milan she, from uh, Lon, Lon on Ranch. Yep, there you go. And she's telling you about her dad that went to deliver milk at the castle. That'll be key into actually gaining entrance to the castle. Something we'll see in a moment here. So there it is, Hyrule Castle, where we will find the princess. Of course, we're going to be interrupted by this guy. Hey, Link, this way. The princess is inside the castle just ahead. Be careful not to get caught by the guards. On this ground, time flows normally. But time stands still when you're on Lon on Ranch or in town. If you want time to pass normally, you need to leave town. Well, well, which way are you going to go now? 
Do you want to hear what I said again? Uh, that would be a no. You're a smart kid. Good luck. Alright, so... If it were at nighttime, I could actually roll into this tree and get another gold skulltella. But for now, what I can do is you can climb these vines right here. I can like get lined up with them. There we go. So basically, if you went up the road normally, you would get caught by the guards. Yeah, oh my god, I am like really batting it out of the park today. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. All right, so let's try this again. Since time is passing normally, it's probably gonna be nighttime again, which is actually fine. We need time to pass here because uh, there's a sequence of events that needs to play out. So basically, but if you jump off the wall here, there's that little roll that we talked about last time. Head up the hill right here. You can pass right behind this guard. Head straight across. And this is a way to avoid all the guards from seeing you. And the garden's in front of... Now, there's a place in the bricks right here in which you can climb. And then head straight on through. Jump down. What I find easiest, you just jump in the water. And you can actually collect rupees as you do this. And what we're going to find down here is, she mentioned her dad delivering milk. Well, there are the milk crates. And he's sawing them off. He's sleeping. And dreaming. So basically... We need a way to get in. The, that, the secret way into the castle is right back there. I'm going to let myself be caught by these guards. Hey, kid, stop! And they throw us out. But guess what we discover down here? She's now hanging out here. So we talk to her. Are you going to the castle, fairy boy? Would you mind finding my dad? He must have fallen asleep somewhere around the castle. What a thing for an adult to do. Tee hee. I can't, I can't believe I just said that. Oh yeah, if you look for him, I'll give this to you. It's been incubating this egg carefully. All right, that egg is gonna play a key role in waking up her dad, who currently is blocking the secret way into the castle. And, and you can actually use it like an item. Like any one of the other items. So if we go into our sub screens here, we can see now there's the egg. And I can put it right there. So basically, when it becomes dawn and when the rooster crows, that egg will hatch. And what did I say before? Nighttime is where you can get these guys. There we go. We have a gold skulltella, and that brings our grand total up to five. So the now with egg in hand and night and the night passing and time passing, we're gonna head back to the castle and wait for this egg to hatch. using the same method as before. And, wow, okay. Almost the same method. I am just really, <laughs> really doing well today. Um, <laughs> all right, so here we go. Let's try this again. Uh, so let's set up the vines. And as you can see, Dawn is quickly approaching here. Guys, getting brighter. Look, a chicken hatched from the egg you were incubating. It's the miracle of life. 
All right, that's exactly what we need. So again, up the hill, this time eluding that guard and heading for that patch in the wall in which we can climb. into the water, into the moat. Let's see what Navi wants. The girl from the ranch said to find her father. Yeah, okay, thank you. All right, so here's the gist. Now that we have it applied to one of our C buttons, I'm actually going to use, let me get to a place. What, tarnation? Can a person get a little shut-eye around here? Now let's talk to him. Hello, who you, might you be? Yep, I'm Talon, owner of Lon Lon Ranch. I went to the castle to deliver some milk, but I sat down here to rest, and I guess I fell asleep. What? Milan was looking for me. I'm gonna catch it from her now. I messed up bad, leaving Milan behind to wait for me. She's really gonna let me have it. Oh, somebody's properly whipped. All right, now that he's out of the way, in this little notch right here, we can grab these milk crates, and we are going to use them to create a makeshift bridge to get in the secret entrance of the castle. saying these milk crates again uh, there's actually a puzzle in the ranch itself in which uh, when you slide them around you can find a secret piece of heart so we'll be getting to that later uh, but for now we get a, we're going to use these two and there's our lovely little chime letting us know that we've accomplished our task and we're going to enter the guards would never let us enter the castle. However, through this secret entrance, we can. So now it's, it's switching to this kind of uh, three-quarter overview, which is actually a, a cool way to um, to have this little puzzle here. So basically, we cannot be seen by the guards. The gist is to stay out of their sight, obviously, using the shrubs to hide. And you have to wait till they've completely gone past or stopped looking both ways and it gets more complicated as things go along this one has two guards so it takes a little bit longer waiting for them to clear like I said it's a bit of a waiting game So, I typically just try to go right up over this one. You, you can walk along the top. And without falling down like I just did. Uh, I'm getting used to this brand new controller. It's, uh, it's kind of fi fi finicky right now, kind of tight. My oh my goodness, like I said, my N64 controllers, the ones that are 20 something years old, uh, so they kick you out of the castle. We got to start all that all that over again. Um, th those are a lot more precise feeling. This one is really tight right now. Uh, look at me making excuses. But this is a brand new controller, and uh, I'm kind of getting used to the action on it with the analog stick. Anyway, kind of embarrassing. So here we go again. Here we go. Here's the 
two guards again. I'm going to make a run for it, since they're in a better position this time. Yeah, this controller. It's, uh... Okay. I'm really... I just ran a huge risk right there, but I made it work. Uh, because, yeah... I'm just still getting used to this thing. Or it's getting used to me. Okay, this is gonna be tricky. Shoot. Okay, I thought I could make a run for it. See, impatience never wins the day when it comes to this. And I was actually impatient there. It's probably because uh, I'm making this video and uh, therefore... Okay, we're just really doing well here. And it's nighttime again. I need to stop rushing. Oh, crap. Guess who's waiting for me? Okay, I forgot. They're actually posted guards at night. Oh, this is, this is wonderful. Now I'm gonna have to wait till it's daytime. <laughs> oh, man. Later in the game, when we have the Song of Storms, you can actually play that right here, and a, a secret hole to an underground cavern opens up. So, alright, great. It is almost morning time. Almost dawn once again. And there we go. Now the guards are no longer posted there. got by him last time and I can't believe it normally I, I'll do this in one in one go uh, I'm not used to having to do this what three times now um, anyway Murphy's law I guess uh, anyway the point is Here we go. Let's try to actually walk this beam this time. If this controller will agree with me. Okay, let's get out of here. Way too darn close. All right. I'm not going to rush these guys this time. We will wait patiently. This is where it switches to this view.
And yeah, there are two guards. One of them is sort of hiding off screen up there. And so just waiting for both guards here. When they both start heading up screen, I can also head that direction. And then right around the corner, we will find the goal of this. These series of little uh, maze puzzles, if you will. Here we go. Rounding the corner. Racing to home. And we made it. Okay. So here's the castle courtyard. My son wanted me to show this before we talk to the princess. Check it out. Through this window right here is something actually really cool. It's a picture of Yoshi, a picture of, of Peach, a picture of Mario and Bowser. And oh, and Luigi over there too. Uh, specifically, uh, you know, scenes from uh, Mario 64. Um, so anyway, yeah, I, I love that little, uh, little Easter egg that they put in here. Some Mario characters. So here we go. Let's talk to the princess. Who? Who are you? How did you get past the guards? Oh, what's that? Is that... A fairy? Then are you... Are you from the forest? Then... Then... You wouldn't happen to have the spiritual stone of the forest, would you? That green shining stone? Do you have it? Yes, we do. Just as I thought. I had a dream. In the dream, dark storm clouds were billowing over the land of Hyrule. But suddenly, a ray of light shot out of the forest, parted the clouds, and lit up the ground. The light turned into a figure holding a green and shining stone, followed by a fairy. I know this is a prophecy that someone would come from the forest. Yes, I thought you might be the one. Oh, I'm sorry. I got carried away with my story and didn't even properly introduce myself. I am Zelda, Princess of Hyrule. What is your name? Link? Strange. It sounds somehow familiar. Okay then, Link. I'm going to tell you the secret of the Sacred Realm that has been passed down by the royal family of Hyrule. Please keep this a secret from everyone. Okay. The legend goes like this. The three goddesses hid the Triforce, containing the power of the gods somewhere in Hyrule. The power to grant the wish of the one who holds the Triforce in his hands. If someone with a righteous heart makes a wish, it will lead Hyrule to the golden age of prosperity. If someone with an evil mind has his wish granted, the world will be consumed by evil. That is what has been told. So, the ancient sages built the Temple of Time to protect the Triforce from the evil ones. That's right. The Temple of Time is the entrance through which you can enter the Sacred Realm from our world. But the entrance is sealed with a stone called the Door of Time. And in order to open the door, it is said that you need to collect three spiritual stones. And another thing you need is the treasure that the royal family keeps along with this legend, the Ocarina of Time.
Did you understand well the story I told you? Yes. That's great. I forgot to tell you. I was spying through this window just now. The other element from my dream, the dark clouds, I believe they symbolize that man in there. Will you look through the window at him? Yes. Can you see the man with the evil eyes? That is Ganondorf, leader of the Gerudos. They hail from the desert to the west. Though he swears allegiance to my father, I am sure he is not sincere. The dark clouds that covered Hyrule in my dream, they must symbolize that man. What happened? Did he see you? Don't worry. He doesn't have any idea what we're planning yet. Yes. I told my father about my dream. However, he didn't believe it was a prophecy. Instead, I can sense that man's evil intentions. What Ganondorf is after must be nothing less than the Triforce of the Sacred Realm. He must have to come to Hyrule to obtain it. And he wants to conquer Hyrule. No, the entire world. Link, now we're the only ones that can protect Hyrule. Please. Okay. Thank you. I, I am afraid. I have a feeling that the man is going to destroy Hyrule. He has such a terrifying power. But it's fortunate that you have come. We must not let Ganondorf get the Triforce. I will protect the Ocarina of Time with all my power. He shall not have it. You, go find the other two stones. Let's get the Triforce before Ganondorf does, and then defeat him. One more thing. Take this letter. I'm sure it will be helpful to you. You received Zelda's letter. Wow! This letter has Princess Zelda's autograph. We will need that to uh, gain entrance to uh, Death Mountain. So, that is our conversation with the princess. And yeah, it looks like Ganondorf's no longer right there. However, we have someone waiting for us here. Basically, Zelda's bodyguard. I am Impa of the Sheikahs. I am responsible for protecting Princess Zelda. Everything is exactly as the princess foretold. You are a courageous boy. You are heading out on a big new adventure, aren't you? My role in the princess's dream is to teach the melody to the one from the forest. This is the ancient, ancient melody passed down by the royal family. I have played this song for Princess Zelda as a lullaby ever since she was a baby. There is a mysterious power in these notes. Now listen carefully. So when we when we when we repeat these notes, it'll then be uh, Zelda's lullaby that we can use later for other things. And. If the castle soldiers find you, there will be trouble. Let me lead you out of the castle. You brave lad, we must protect this beautiful land of Hyrule. Take a good look at that mountain. That is Death Mountain, home of the Gorons. 
They hold the spiritual stone of fire. At the foot of Death Mountain, you will find my village, Kakariko Village. Or Kakariko. That is where I was born and raised. You should talk to some of the villagers there before you go up Death Mountain. And there are several things that are really important in that village. The song that I just taught you has, has some mysterious power. Only royal family members are allowed to learn this song. Remember, it'll help to improve your connection to the royal family. The princess is waiting for you to return to the castle with the stones. All right, we're counting on you. The influence from this game echoes all the way through every game ever since, all the way up to Tears of the Kingdom, which is actually really cool. Um, so let's go over. You, we can actually do several things at this point. There are several um, different lands that are open to us. Uh, one such place is Lanon Ranch. And if we get there during the day, we'll find uh, Milan there again. And we can actually meet our horse, uh, Epona, that will be our horse in, in the future when we're um, grown up. And also in this door here, you can play a game to get a, uh, an extra jar. Uh, at first it's filled with milk and then later. All right, so this is the ranch. That tall structure back there, that's where that heart piece is with all the crates that I mentioned earlier. Oh, it's the fairy boy again. I heard that you found my dad. Did you like the castle? Did you see the prince princess? Dad came home in a hurry after you found him. Oh yeah, I have to introduce you to my friend, fairy boy. She's this horse, her name is Epona. Isn't she cute? So basically what we want to do now is e equip our equip our ocarina. And talk to her again. Oh cute, Nakarina. Are you gonna play this song? This song's really important in the future. It calls Epona to us. song. Hey, Pona. We'll be seeing each other soon, dude. Actually, delayed even. Either way. Alright, so... Sleepyhead again. Mumble mumble, huh? I'm awake. I'm awake already. This guy's truly frightened of his daughter. What? Well, I'll be. If it ain't the forest kid from the other day. By the way, thanks a lot for waking me up. I'm almost doing a southern accent. Okay. Uh, it, it must take some doing, but I finally have Milan back in a good mood. So, what are you up to today? Got some free time on your hands, you say? Well, how about a little game? These three cuckoos are here, the special super cuckoos. I'm going to throw these into the gaggle of normal ones. If you can pick out these three special birds within the certain time limit, I'll give you something good. If you can't find them, I win. It's 10 rupees to play. 
Alright. So the gist of this is to, uh, there's, uh, they, they put them in, in the, kind of the same section every time. Oh, crap. <laughs> it is not my day. I accidentally left. I got overzealous with my bird picking up. All right, so let's play again. Here, here, we, here we go. <laughs> All right, so there's one. The other one's right over in this corner. Okay, not that one. There's two. The other one typically is over here. And just in the nick of time, golly, I'll be darned, it's plumb impossible. That's the last one, you found them all, come on over here. Alright, so this is actually pretty cool. Uh, he's asking if we want to marry his daughter. Uh, I'm just kidding, just kidding. You're a little young for that, aren't you? Ha ha. This game makes a lot of references to how young he is, how small Link is. Which is, I think, to point out that he starts off as just a little boy and becomes a man later on in the game. Um, but yeah, it's very intent on pointing that over, out over and over again. And basically, he's letting us know that he's giving us a bottle. And it has his milk in it. This milk will restore your hearts. And then after which, you can use it to uh, catch certain things and keep certain things in a bottle. Uh, this is, again, one of the items that we can put on our buttons. Put on our C button. So if I take a drink right here, it filled up my hearts. And I still have a little bit of milk left over. So there's our first bottle. And uh, there's actually up to four that we can get throughout the game. Another one that comes easily is the one when we go to uh, the Zoras and uh, the, getting a princess uh, who left a message in a bottle at the bottom of the lake. Uh, there's another one, and uh, so anyway, yeah, there's four total. And it's almost nighttime. I'm not gonna make the village, but that's okay. the drawbridge going up over there. There are things that we can do at night that we can't do during the day. For instance, grabbing some gold skulltellas, which we can actually use that to our advantage. So when we go to Kakariko Village, which is right here, um, right off the bat, the tree be just beyond the entrance uh, has a, a gold one. You'll see in just a moment. There's like five or six hiding in this village. There's another one. I believe that's about six that we have now. There's another one hiding right up here on the side of this house. So that gives us seven? Yep. Right, there's seven. There is another one. Let's see, that crate has a chicken. Yeah, it's right up here against this house. There's one up that ladder right up there, too. Yep, there it is. Alright, I believe that's eight. And then if we use our slingshot, right there, there's one this ladder.
Now this town has several things in it. Um, you can get a bottle during the day by catching uh, seven chickens that are scattered throughout the village, bringing them back to the girl there. Um, and then just beyond here it is the graveyard, which is a really important place actually in the game. And one of the temples actually begins here. There are things, uh, holes and caverns hidden beneath the, uh, these gravestones. And a lot of times they are marked by these flowers in front of them. So what we can do is drop down. get the Hylian shield without having to buy it. Simple enough, it's right here underground. That will be important later on, and this basically is just like the other shield. You come in here and you can equip it. And now I have that. That's going to be important as we, as we climb up Death Mountain. So next up, there is a place, I believe it's this gravestone right here. Okay, not that one. Mm. Um. Is it this one. All right, we need the sun song, don't we? to defeat those guys, um, this, the lovely Redeads. So when you see this mark on the ground in certain places throughout the game, uh, the Triforce indicates a place where you can actually play Zelda's Lullaby, and you'll hear a nice little chime when you take out your ocarina at that point in the game in which it is applicable. This is one of those times. So I played Zelda's Lullaby in front of the royal family's tomb on top of the Triforce. It triggers this cut movie and the following events. Exposing a secret passage into the tomb below. Alright, this room has a bunch of bats in it. I believe it's four. Let's see, where's the other one? Is that it? Yep. Alright, so killing the four bats unlocks the door at the end there. That fourth one always eludes me. It's always hiding somewhere. Typically back there where we entered the room. However, with the door unlocked, we can now enter this. Brings us to this lovely poison-filled place with a bunch of zombies running around. However, if you run as quickly as possible, they don't stop you too many times. They, they, they actually can freeze you in place. So just keep running. Moving on. Now, let's check this. This poem is dedicated to the memory of the dearly departed members of the royal family. The rising sun will eventually set a newborn's life will fade. From sun to moon, moon to sun, give peaceful rest to the living dead. This is an interesting poem, huh? Something is inscribed on the tombstone. It is a secret melody of the Composer Brothers. So 
So this is the sun song. Brothers, they, uh, I believe they look like Mario and Luigi, although so did uh, Milan's father, too. Anyway, uh, I love the little things that they add in these games. Restless souls wander where they don't belong. Bring them calm with a sun song. That is a hint to what we can now do. So, by the way, if you, if you go into here... Right below where we keep track of our gold skulltellas, you actually have a list of the songs. That way you can remember how to play them. And those re-deads back here, the zombies. If we take out our ocarina. Whoops. And play the sun song. That little hint back there was referencing this. The fact that they freeze in place, you can walk right by them without them freezing you. Alright, cool. So there you have it. We got the Sun Song, we got the Hylian Shield. And... That's one of the last things we can do. I mean, yeah, if it... Now that it's daytime, we could go uh, hunting for chickens. Shoot, if it were still nighttime, I just remembered where there's another gold skull. Tell, I believe, yeah, we get our first prize. And actually, here, here we go. That was an accident. I pressed the wrong C button. All right, taking this out. You can now use this song, the sun song. And the sun song will change it from day to night, night to day. The howling of the wolf indicates just that. So if we head over here, you can actually hear it. There it is. Every darn time I run into those stupid things. Alright, so that's number 10. So, now that we have 10 of them, I believe we can get our first uh, reward for collecting them. If I don't get completely turned around here. Right, it's back here. Um, they have a house. And the, the Skulltellas are... Uh, these tokens that you bring back to the house of Skulltala, and basically, there has been a curse. We look like this because of the spider's curse, but since you've destroyed ten spiders, it's starting to weaken. Did the kids who returned give you any rewards? So basically, around the room, you're going to run into people that are still cursed. However, when you see a human, that's because we've gotten 10. The curse has been broken, and here's a reward. And like I mentioned in the last time in part one, we now have an adult wallet. We can carry up to 200 rupees. So for just getting 10 gold skulltellas, we now have a bigger wallet. That's our reward. So that concludes number two. Next time we are going to go up Death Mountain and deal with the next. Uh, we're going to deal with the next uh, the Fire Temple to get to the the Fire Spiritual Stone up there with the Gorons, and we're going to do that next time in part three. I thank you guys for joining me very much. It's been a pleasure. This is Loud Boy. God bless you guys. Hey. Uh, God loves you, and I uh, just be kind, be nice to one another, be strong, and uh, go out there and do some good for the world. <laughs>